I am Cecilia Wallach. I'm an American poet, writer, and teacher. I am here in Poland as a Fulbright scholar, teaching for one academic year at the University of Jesuf in the English Studies Department. I am teaching American literature and creative writing. We are this evening in the university library. In addition to my teaching at the university as a Fulbright Scholar, I'm also pursuing other opportunities to be involved in the wider community here in Jezhev. So this evening I am leading a poetry writing workshop for students from the university and students from a local high school and everyone will be writing a poem. So what do you need to write a poem? Imagination. You need imagination, okay. What else do you need? Emotions, I think. Emotions, yeah. Inspiration. Inspiration. Where do you get inspiration? From the things around you. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, the poet William Carlos Williams, who's a great American poet, and he said, we are bombarded by a thousand poems a day. All we have to do is open our eyes and see them. And so it's all, all around us. Anybody ever heard of William Carlos Williams before? He's quite famous in American literature. And um, I can recite for you one of his famous poems that I like very much. It's called, This is Just to Say. This is just to say, I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me. They were delicious, so sweet and so cold. It's a whole poem. What do you think? Short and sweet, okay. You like that apology? Yeah. Mm -hmm. why, why do you like the apology, Veronica? Um, it seemed very genuine. Yes, yes, I'm really sorry I ate those plums. They were really delicious. <laughs> you think, but do you think he was really sorry he ate them? Maybe not, it's a little bittersweet. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, it sounds, but it sounds like just the kind of words you use to speak. Um, it sounds like it could have been a note that he left for his wife. Oops, sorry, I ate the plums. Oh, they were so good. Too bad. You know? So William Carlos Williams also said, you know, I'm glad nobody said this, but sometimes when I ask people, what do you need to write a poem? They say, oh, you need a great idea. I absolutely disagree. You don't need a great idea. William Carlos Williams said, poems are not made of ideas, they're made of words. No ideas but in things. You can have an idea, but you don't have a poem. You can have an idea, but that doesn't give you a song. You, don't, you can have an idea, but it's not a painting, okay? So he said, poems are made of words comes back to my original attraction to poetry was just because I loved words and I loved the sounds of words. And my mother would read to me and she would read, you know, with a special voice. And when she would read poems, she would read them in a way that I could hear the waves of the music. And I just love that. Maybe I'm strange. Okay, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm strange. But I love that, hearing that. So all you need are some words. And every poem you write, you write differently. Every poem is different. But I always try to keep in mind another thing William Carlos Williams said, if it ain't a pleasure, it ain't a poem. Even if you're writing about something that's not beautiful, you should be having pleasure with the words, with putting the words together. 
And for me, Isabella, my favorite moment in writing a poem is when the words surprise me. When I write something I didn't know I was going to write. It's almost like the, you know that feeling, Veronica? It's almost like, whoa, what happened? Okay, there's something like a kind of magic chemistry in the words, okay? Everybody has something to write with and to write upon. Okay. I'm going to give you a gift, um, but you can't look at it yet. Okay. So, and I'm going to give you this one. All right, so what do you think I've given you? What do you think is on this paper? A bunch of words, okay? Words I, I really like. Some of them you may not know, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. Um, so here's what you're going to do. I'm going to give you a signal. You're going to turn that paper over, and you're going to just randomly, however you like, choose seven words, okay? Doesn't matter how, you can close your eyes and point. You can pick the seven longest words, the seven shortest words. Um, it doesn't matter. You can pick words you don't know what they mean. You can circle them, okay? Uh, you, you can circle them with your pen or you can write them down onto your paper. Uh, there's only kind of one trick. You have one minute. Go! Three seconds, and stop. Everybody get seven words? Okay. You know what I'm going to ask you to do, right? Yeah, yeah. Poets do this all the time. They just, and sometimes it's like a game, like one poet, you know, I have a lot of friends who are poets, and I'll say, okay, use these three words in a poem. It's like, I can't, those three words don't even go together. But that's the fun, is finding out how maybe they do go together. Maybe they don't go together in the usual way. Maybe it's just this combination that's like in the Anne Sexton poems. Um, ontomological inscape, trickery, and love. Three things you would never expect to be in combination with each other, but they are. Okay. So you have 10 minutes to see what you can make of these seven words. You can use any other words in the world you want to use. You can use other words from the list. The only rule is that you have to use the seven words that you chose, or chose you, at least one time each. Okay? You can change the endings a little bit if you want. It can be kind of a story. It can be kind of a song. It can make sense or not make sense. Um, just see what happens when you throw those seven words together. But also, don't forget this. Um, Robert Rochenberg is a famous artist who said, being an artist is a matter of learning to make the right mistakes. So sometimes, a mistake, you know, I mean, if you're doing everything correctly, you're probably not going to make art, okay? If you're worried about doing everything correctly. So, um, so don't worry too much about that. But sure, if you want to use your phone to translate, go ahead. And if you have any questions about a word, raise your hand and I'll try to explain. minutes left, but I would love if some people would read out loud what they've written. Patricia, will you read your crazy poem? Okay. And I'll step away so you can take off your mask. First, tell us the words that you had to put together somehow. So it was papaya, uh, crucify, secret, kiwi, 
dance, August. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah. What was the last one? Oh my god, I don't know. Secret, I think. Okay. Okay. So. Does it have a title? I uh, know. No title. Okay. Untitled. Yeah. Uh, for every day of June, he gifted me with a mango. I told him he was a dance. Then for every day of July, he gifted me with a papaya. I said I would rather get crucified than accept his gift. Every day of August, he gifted me with a kiwi. I said he needs to let go. Now it's the end of September, and I, now my secret is I would die for a mango. <laughs> Love this, okay. <laughs> Can I reread it, Patricia? It's just so... And she creates this form, right, that she used, be, I suppose, because she had the, the, the month August. Every day of June, he gifted me with a mango. I didn't like it. He was such a dunce. Then every day of July, he gifted me with a papaya. I said I would rather get crucified than accept his gift. Every day of August, he gifted me with a kiwi. I said he needs to let up. Now it's the end of September. And my secret is, oh, how I would die for a mango. Okay, <laughs> that's wonderful. I love that. Roosters and hens. Roosters and hens. Roosters and hens. They're waiting for the criminal to come. The fox, the fear, the dancer. In seconds, they will waltz together, escaping and chasing, hopelessly. Hopelessly, just like people escaping the sun and then watching it when the violet turns blue. They want more time, but their fox always comes. And then the music stops, and the violet starts to astonish. Wonderful. Epitaph of Explorer. A bonfire lit on Daring ship, a daring ship of Amsterdam. The slowing light devours the time, vanishing from the sailors. Hunching over bonfire, the ghosts of glorious thoughts ponder the sleeping reality that this is just the worst. Mm -hmm. Howling wind will wear their will of going any longer. The dreams of journey over, they now begin their slumber. That's such a, such a wonderful rhythm. <laughs> their dreams of journey over, they now begin their slumber. And what's that line, hunched over bonfires? the ghosts of glorious thoughts. It's a wonderful metaphor, isn't it? The ghosts of glorious thoughts. Okay. Um, the title is The Gentle Whisper of Your Love. Your kiss on my lips, the blush on your nose. We crashed into each other, and like young teens, it was reckless love. You gave me hope. In the darkness you held me, by the bonfire of our hearts. As sweet as it was, as lovingly as you held me, it was all over. You devoured what I gave you, and you left a hole in my tender heart. In silence, you left me. A teen, I am no more, but the longing emptiness remains. I miss you, and I wish I could love again. Oh, lovely. That's wonderful. <laughs> Veronica, you have a great reading voice for reading your poetry out loud. You. you had a really, you've done it before, yes? yes. Okay, it shows. It shows, yeah, it's really, that's, and that's an important thing, you know, that's, you know, in, in, in your life as a poet. That will be important that you can bring your poems across. Isabella, will you want to read? Um, the title is H post T. And I fell for another man, despite the promise to myself that I will never laugh again. He has shown me delight, my lost piece of soul. And he sweetly whispers in my ears, his in infinitive always, always, always. His fingers on my skin and whispers to my ear, I'm hypnotized. I close my eyes. I feel like I blossom with his hands on me. I open them. He vanished. Now I look for him in other men, and no one will love me like he can. You are just an adventure and a dream. Beside the nightmare, despite the nightmare, stay longer with me. Mm. Lovely. I love how um, I, was, I was hypnotized and that I seem to blossom. I open my eyes and he had vanished. So it's really quite magical, but you, I listen to some of these poems and I forget, oh, you just had to put these words together because they seem like 
it seems like when the word blossom comes, it just seems like, oh yeah, it's just the right word to come. So the title is A Night. It's like an infinite dream. The sinister heat rising our body's temperature. How you sweetly hold me until the dusk approaches. It may seem that this could be love. Lush love, passionate love and sweet love. Why won't we stay like this? Ruthlessly, I want to stay like this. It ends at one point though, this infinite dream. I have to leave and let you breathe. Ah, that's great. <laughs> I love this ending like it. I have to leave and let you breathe. So I love that ending. A nice use of repetition there too that, that creates um, this rhythm. Dariush, would you read for us? Everybody chuckles sometimes. When I try to close my eyes, I see a big ripened papaya on a tree on a, of Dominicana and I laugh. A criminal who killed the lynx chuckles eating every berry, but the awakened Tibetan master chuckles even faster. Eating, eating at the lavish table makes me unable to stop my chuckle. I feel so lucky. Wonderful. I love that. I love that. I love that opening line. Everyone chuckles sometimes. Yeah, I think that's great. The title is uh, Precariously Precious. Oh, tell me, hunchback of Notre Dame, how you felt that fateful day when they took your precious girl, Esmeralda, primrose like and dear. Did you want to ring the grand bronze bells and show the world your misery? Were you baffled, perhaps, looking down at charred Parisian streets? Did you want to grab her quick with your big, clumsy hands and never let go? But no. He took that love from you. The one who swore to protect you and treat you like a son. It left you petrified. Uneasy, old hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> it's wonderful that you tell this whole story. <laughs> with your, did you want to grab her with your big, clumsy hands? That was one of the words you had to use, right? Clumsy. Works beautifully. So the title is Honeymoon. And it was a hot summer in Pennsylvania. Eating fresh raspberries have never been so exciting. Sitting in a bar with these people and drinking kamikaze shots. And then I saw you with your egotistical attitudes. The courage I had was not expected. I went to say hi and you nervously answered. You showed me a dense forest. We were dancing on the grass. And then you heroically uh, saved me from the snake. Little did I know that it all have been a mistake. <laughs> okay, great. It's so crazy. In Pennsylvania, drinking kamikazes, even berries never tasted so good. You saved me from the snake. It's great. It's wonderful. All right. Um, Claudia, did you read? Uh, darkness is secretly approaching me, in silence, not making any word. Moonlight illuminating my face, ruthlessly changing me and person I was before. I still feel the heat, but not how I used to. My thoughtlessness led to it. Now there's no turning back. Wonderful. This is great, Claudia. Can I reread it? May I reread? I love this. Uh, Darkness is secretly approaching me in silence, not making any word. Moonlight illuminating my face, ruthlessly changing me. And the person I was before, I still feel the heat, but not now. Not now? Not how I used to. Not how I used to. My, thought, my thoughtlessness led to it. Now there is no turning back. Ooh, wow. You know that the moonlight is changing your face ruthlessly. All right, Hannah, are you willing to read for us? Uh, at the evening, everything falls into silence. At this moment, you start to dream. Time slip opens and nothing else matters. Even dragons eating watermelons can disturb your peace. <laughs> That's when you whisper, how brilliant are nights in Amsterdam. Wait a minute, I lost the ending, so let me try this again. That's when I... Oh, yeah. And where's... There, and then is this sentence, and then there's this. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, wait. Okay, let me see if I can get this right. Night in Amsterdam. At the evening, everything falls into silence. At this moment, you start to dream. Time slips open and nothing else matters. Even dragons eating watermelon can't disturb your peace. 
That's when you whisper, how brilliant are nights in Amsterdam. That's great, I love that. Even dragons eating watermelons cannot disturb your peace. Was anybody surprised by what they wrote? Maybe, yeah, Isabella, okay, great. Um, so you can do this anytime. You can take the words with you. This is kind of a fun thing you can do with your friends if you want to. The British poet John Keats used to you know, do these kinds of things with his friends where they would have sonnet writing contests where you got 15 minutes. Uh, the surrealist poets and artists were always like playing these kind of games. Just give yourself the challenge of, okay, how can you use this crazy combination of words together? And sometimes what you come out with is like, um, you know, Dominica's poem was, it was really like a, a whole story that made sense. And sometimes it's just bizarre, okay, <laughs> like Claudia's. Sometimes it's like a song. I felt that Maximilian's poem has just such wonderful, do you know meter? Were you consciously using meter? Or it's maybe it's something almost like second nature to you that you, you know, that you hear. So it's really been my pleasure to spend this time with you. Um, thank you for being so uh, imaginative and open and, uh, and welcoming. So good luck to you. And maybe I'll see you again. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.